Hi guys, this is Amnal and this time around we are going to open some kegs. As you can see I have quite a few gathered here, um, but we are going to do that in batches. Uh, so basically you can buy kegs right here and well, um, this is basically 60 bucks, this is, I don't know, 45 or something. Alright, shut up, ship. And, uh, well, we are going to open uh, 60 of those cakes uh, to, um, well, show you what your collection would look like after similar investment. 60 kegs uh, is in the term of free to play between, uh, well, 15 to, let's say, uh, 20 days. 20 days tops. If you, if you get all the, all the ore you can get from uh, free-to-play daily rewards you would get uh, well probably like in 17 days something like that 15 perhaps uh, get 60 cakes uh, on top of some some other stuff so that's uh, pretty decent uh, I'd say and on top of that uh, on top of daily rewards that you can see here uh, you get uh, rewards from leveling and rewards from playing rank and so on and so forth. So that will add up. So uh, at first, I would say it's well, closer to somewhere between ten and uh, fifteen, depending on how uh, how much rank you grind. So uh, if if you are really going for higher ranks, that's probably closer to 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 a week. Anyway, let's get to it. I'm going to. This is going to be more in depth than the you know next keg openings because i'm going to discuss most of the rares and so on and so forth and for those who don't have a metric fact on of those to, to choose from but want to uh, focus on some things so let's go i have only opened one cake so far so this is basically a so there is a way to open it i believe automatically or something like that never got around to well, alright, so we got uh, um, commons, which we are not going to discuss, really. Uh, you will get commons from all those four cards. And around here you are going to get rares and uh, epics and legendaries. So, uh, third uh, wild hound, hunt hound, well, that's an awful. Uh, I'd probably pass, uh, because uh, two are uh, more or less enough and uh, you will need, uh, if you want to play those things, you would probably need at least two Dune Banner Light Cavalries. Uh, what, what that does is they jump uh, out of your deck on your, uh, uh, on your board whenever you start a turn by losing uh, for more than 20 power. Uh, not sure if they will be playable, but they could be. In some specific decks, I, I can't really see it right now, but uh, they, they, they have some potential, but you wouldn't probably use three of them because that would be a lot of milling them uh, back into your deck. So, eh, Morganing them but back into your deck, so eh, probably not. This, this, however, is a staple for Reveal Nilfgaard. A Nilfgaard deck that uh, focuses on revealing uh, uh, units in your deck and, well, mostly enemy hand, but and uh, this card can be revealed in your hand and uh, played on board. Uh, played on board, and this is probably going to be uh, free of those in most reveal Nilfgaard decks. So I'm going to, uh, unless you like not care about Nilfgaard at all, I would pick this one. Yeah, let's go. Okay, so we'll end when it will be at uh, 300, uh, 236. Uh, commons. Um, Adrenaline Rush, I do not like that card. It's, uh, I, it has its uses, but having one in your deck is, is, is enough most of the time. So, it's probably passing that. Uh, those two cards are a staple of their own. Uh, so this is this card, Skellige. Uh, you, you basically need, well, oh, Sometimes you can play with two, but usually you, you play with three. And you definitely want three Blue Stripes Commandos in uh, uh, the deck based on them. So, well, that's basically whatever you like, but those both are great choices. Um, 
Okay, we are not going to discuss Bootstrap Commando because this is too <laughs> uh, a bit a bit complicated. And uh, so, War Longship. Uh, whenever you discard a unit, damage a random enemy by two. And uh, um, yeah, this is something you you will mm, use to damage enemies a lot uh, when you are playing uh, Skellige discard with King Bran. So let's go. Okay, I will try to like. Balance it a bit for for complete new 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 players and some people who, for example, really like to uh, to 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 watch keg openings but have played the game before. And now this is a rare. So we got a spotter. Whenever you reveal a card, boost this unit wherever it is. So uh, that's another staple in the reveal new card. You just have them in your deck. They get boosted. To, Throughout the game, uh, when you reveal uh, yours or enemy cards, and uh, uh, you, you just play them at the end of the, uh, of the uh, uh, it's in the last round. All right, so Demirti and Shackles, uh, you already have one apparently you start with, so uh, you don't need the the, the second set, uh, not not by a long shot. Well. It's, I can't remember I've ever used a deck that used more than one Dimension Shackle. Maybe two somewhere, but uh, one is enough for now, so you're okay with on that front. Uh, Aretuza Adept, uh, well, if you want to play Weather deck as Northern Realms, then, well, sure. Uh, one or two wouldn't hurt. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to tell if they will be played, but they are. They're, those are definitely not dead cards, and uh, mercenary, other mercenary is a spy that allows you to cycle through your special cards from your deck, and uh, definitely a worthwhile card in in many uh, Skyrtel decks. Uh, Skyrtel has, for me at least, uh, the the lowest uh, priority, but I'm still going to pick, pick that guy. But you you really need three of those. So. So, next one. Okay, another rare, so we got a uh, Tamiran Infantryman and we got a premium version, as you can see, there's a lot of moving around and uh, when we deploy this guy, he summons uh, all the other copies of him, which are ah, two other copies, uh, for a swing of uh, three or more, usually more because those guys can get boosted uh, in some decks uh, by, uh, well, a very good card, all in all. Okay, we got our first... Um... Alright, so this is... A... You may remember that Sheila de Tanserville is a part of a starter deck by uh, Northern Realms. But as you can see, it shows that we don't own her. That's because this is uh, her premium version. Uh, premium version, which, you know, an animated and such, that's why she shows uh, like that. So, well, you probably don't want to, to, to rush into premiums that you already have. But well, it's 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 up to your to your choice. Uh well, she's an interest fairly interesting card with a high tempo. You basically play her and play another car a special card from your hand, which uh, makes uh, you know for playing two cards at the same time and increases the amount of the speed in which you're uh your power rises on board, which is which is a, a quite useful stuff. So, she's not bad at all. White Frost is uh, well, it's going to be a very useful card in uh, uh, weather decks, especially weather decks uh, by monsters, uh, since uh, there are cards that can reuse this card. Uh, and, oh, actually, no, Waterhard has been changed between so. But you can use Aromancy, I believe, uh, with it. So it, it's it's a decent decent card. And Sheldon Zax, however, is is also a very very good card if you want to play. Uh, so this is a neutral card, but well, limited to other decks. I'm not the greatest fan of those, so I think I will just get uh, Sheldon Zax uh, for myself. It's 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 a very good card for quite a few uh, interesting decks as Skirtel. Uh, standard uh, dwarf decks, but as well, but also decks that. It's, it depend on moving around a lot. So, at least two options there. Ok, 
Okay, we get overdose. This is a new card that uh, well didn't exist in this form in the closed beta. Uh, we damage three adjacent units by three and remove three arm armor from them. It's uh, a bit of a trash. I don't think it's going to, to be used and I don't think it will survive in this form for long. Not really. All right, so res, we okay. So we get uh, tremors. Uh, Stem of tremors. It's it's a special card. You deal uh, damage to up to eight enemies, and you deal uh, two damage. You cannot deal uh, that two damage twice to one enemy. So basically, up to eight enemies get damaged uh, by two. We already have one. It's it's a useful card, but you know, usually use in some decks at least you use one or two, so we can skip that. Imperial Go Golem and Neca are uh, staple cards for for two different. So this is once again, well, not only for all the Neil cards actually. It's it's a great card to have free free uh, free copies of because uh, as you can see, orders summon this unit whenever you use your uh, card of your. A leader, this guy just jumps on board. Uh, so three of those guys and just just jump out of of, of your deck, uh, thinning your deck, making it uh, uh, for you less likely to get your uh, you know silver and gold cards, but also giving you nine strength on board, which which is well great for uh, in addition to what you get from your leader. And Neckers are uh, a scourge of uh, close beta. Uh, Necker based decks were. Um, well, on top of uh, one of the very top decks for last three or four months, and uh, despite some things got changed, uh, there was the monster passive got removed, uh, faction passives got removed. But I think it's it's a still good card. But uh, at this point, I'm more interested in Imperial Golem. And if you are more interested in playing monsters, you can't go wrong with with, with Nekas. You, you really. You will really want to to to, to check out Nekas. It's it's not clear if they will be as useful they, as they used to be, but uh, well, they probably will. Okay, next one. And we get Dolbatana Trapper. Okay, so this is a problem because deploy spawn a fireball trap on an opposing drop, and you cannot right click on it to, to learn what fireball trap is. Uh, you would have to just Google it, uh, check Gwent DB uh, site, and uh, I hope it. I hope it's updated already. But uh, yeah, all in all, you probably want to. Uh, I should have prefaced that uh, that whole opening. If you are a new player. Probably better off, and if you plan on spending a lot of money, or at least like drop drop that 30, 40, 60 bucks on this game to, to like have a, have a starter, like as if you, you were buying a full priced game, then you're probably better off just using up the, the cakes you get on a day to day basis and wait a week or two. Mm, for you to learn how the game works, what the cards are, what you like, what you don't, what you got amazed about when you met a, a deck uh, in the hands of, of your enemy and so on and so forth. Or if, if you are into this kind of thing, you can check online what kind of decks are considered top tier uh, and so on and so forth. So, uh, and then if you get, want to get your like top money worth, that's probably the best best time to, to open the decks once things settle down a little bit and you are more knowledgeable yourself. Now, so Dolbatana Trap, it's a it fireball trap, is a spying unit you put on the ranged row and after one turn it's going to explode dealing, uh, I believe, free damage. It's, it has been changed yesterday, I, I'm not sure. I, I think it deals free damage uh, to everything on that row and destroys itself. Uh, right, so reverse scouts, we already have two, but you really want three. Uh, uh, crate uh, Raiders, those are uh, staple discard cards, as you can see. Uh, resurrect this unit whenever it is discarded. So uh, remember that uh, War Longship. Uh, you discard this guy and he still lands on board and your warships, uh, war long should shoot enemies, uh, using it. And there's a lot of similar synergies. So this is a staple. And this is something, uh, 
well, a fairly new card, which is similar to the Spotter. Remember, Spotter where the, it go, boosts itself by one when, whenever, wherever it is, when uh, you reveal a unit, or when you reveal a card, and this guy boosts uh, itself, but by one every time you use a special card. So those are uh, two really good cards. I will get one uh, and great. And well, all three you want uh, three of those if you uh, tend to play the if you want to play those factions. Another thing, actually, I should have bloody said it in the beginning. Now I, uh, am, well, it's awkward. But uh, another thing is. You probably don't want to mill all your cards, turn them into, to, you know, uh, uh, shards and uh, craft cards for the one deck you decided. So, especially you don't want to do it like in your first few weeks, let's say even month of playing this game, because you don't want to know what's going to change. It's it's open beta and there can be a lot of changes. So that's that's one thing. Second, you don't know how, no one knows and no one will know for two or three weeks how meta, uh, meta will develop and uh, the decks that may seem uh, amazing at the start uh, will cease to be so. It, it has been like that every single time a major patch was, so this time it's not going to be different. If you are going to like open 100 or 200 kegs and mill uh, like half of the factions or something, you are going to have a bad time. Just uh, ease in into the game and wait with such decisions till you, you know, play that few few weeks, I would say a month. Then you will have informed decisions. So we have that spotter. Vryhead Vanguard. So uh, this is like similar to the guy we, we discussed uh, a second ago. This guy gets boosted whenever you mulligan a card. So this guy would be useful for Francesca deck that uh, allows you to mulligan free, uh, free cards at the start and so on and so forth. So, uh, I'm actually going to get, oh, I'm going to get the happy. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to get the happy. This is happy is uh, got a little bit redesigned between close and, uh, open beta and I'm interested to see if they are going to be uh, a useful deck, but well, basically depending on what is your priority faction, you you probably, you, you are okay with either of those. Uh, probably, for example, if you were going Nilgat, you probably want to get the spotter outright, and, and if you are only opening like 60, uh, 60 of those kegs, and, but since I'm opening like 300, uh, I'm okay with, you know, spreading my uh, things around because I don't want uh, to get uh, a lot of doubles. Okay, nothing rare. Mm, so we already have two, two giants, two reverse scars. Well, we'll just even it out and get a second dollar and foot soldier for our reveal deck. As you can see, we are getting like in this situation, like if we had a few more cards, we would be uh, topped off. So. If you don't have a very limited amount of decks, oh, so, okay, so those happies are actually commons. Uh, Alright, so we get our first legendary. Uh, all three are, are, are really good actually. I'm not like, I'm not a fan of gales, uh, of cards like gales that are or actually the extra. They're pretty similar. So this guy plays, you deploy him as a spy, um, pretty. He's a god on the other side of the board, as the enemy, and he is. Uh, um, he allows you to play top cards uh, from your deck, two cards when you play him. Uh, but he is also, as you can see, a premium card, so I think this is <laughs> the reason I'm going to take him. I would prefer Tibor Eggbracht, to be honest. Th this is the most solid card of those three, to be honest. This is probably the close second. Uh, this guy allows you to, well, compare those two basically. Uh, <laughs> this guy uh, is, uh, well, power difference is six, right? Because this is two for you, this is four for your enemy. So, so this is a huge power difference in gold. And uh, then this guy gets you top cards, no matter what, well, the ones that are there. And uh, you don't really have options of putting your cards in a specific order in Northern Realms, not at the moment. So 
Uh, this guy, however, draws a gold and a silver card. So, well, yes. And you can uh, choose one of those and play it. And, uh, and put the one on top of your deck. So this guy provides tempo. Uh, assuming you have a fairly powerful card because you play to both of them. But this guy is six more power and, yeah. But since he's a, a premium, we are going to go with a premium. Come on. Well, look at that, back to back. Uh, hmm. All of them are great, <laughs> actually. Uh, Tibo, um, basically you are trading one of your cards in your hand to boost him by 15. And clash means that you cannot do it if your opponent... Oh, never mind, it's... Ah. I mixed up two cards, so you uh, you deploy him, and if your opponent has not passed, that's what clash means. It only fires if your opponent and has not uh, passed yet. Boost self by 15, so he gets to 25, and opponent draws uh, and and reveals bronze card. That doesn't mean that this card has to be revealed for him to draw it. He just draws and reveals it. So this is great. A very powerful swing of 25 gold. Now, uh, Madman Lugas discards a bronze card from your deck, so you pick a card. Uh, I believe it's a. Or is it random? Actually, I haven't played him because this is a new effect. Uh, and the damage a unit by discarded by unit uh, base power. Uh, but with. With seven strength and damage abilities that actually that also discard this this is an amazingly strong card. Uh, Zoltan Chivai, uh, move three units to the row uh, to this row on your side if they are allies. Strengthen them by two. So if you uh, play this card and use his ability on allies, uh, he is worth uh, fourteen, and you can use it actually to, for example, uh, pull them out of weather and things like that. He's agile as all the golds are, which means you can play him wherever. So, all those very powerful cards, I think... Huh. Well, you could, well, if you pick any of those and you would be in great hands. Uh, I think I'll just go, go with Tibor. Although, Tibor has a great animated uh, animation, so I would probably, I should probably fish for, for his premium version. Because it will be a sad day if we end up finding him in the next keg and uh, as a premium. Uh, okay, so this is a premium spotter. It still shows that you don't own one, but well, we do. So I'm going to just grab a premium spotter. Oh, I will discard the others later. This is getting long. This I really want to open. Uh, those uh, 60 kegs in one sitting, but we'll see. Right, Redania lead, you start with two. Uh, whenever this unit's armor reaches zero, boost cell by five. So, great stuff. Uh, a, a very powerful unit, uh, actually, for, for a bronze card. You start with two, though, so don't really need it outright because you will, uh, you will find yourself, even with like 60 cards, uh, 60 kegs, you will find yourself very close, uh, quickly in a situation where, and well, you. You will have like all of them, or three of them will be, or two of them will be free. Uh, so you would normally just pick uh, Clan Drummond Shield Maidens. And uh, they're very interesting. Uh, veteran Strength uh, Cell by One. So this is uh, something you find on many Skellige units. This is a remnant of when uh, faction passives were a thing. That was Skellige passives. That means whenever. Uh, uh, a turn, uh, a round passes. So at the start of the round two and at the start of the round three, wherever this card is, it will strengthen itself by one. So uh, in round one, this is uh, three. In round two, this is four. And in round three, this is five. And when you deploy it, damage a unit by two. If that unit was already damaged, which means if she, if it had a red, uh, red indicator of strength. Summon another clan Diamond Shield Maiden. So you can basically summon means, uh, as we discussed, 
uh, pull out of your deck and deploy, uh, which means that you play one damage, you, uh, you, that summons another, she damages something, that summons another, she damages something. That's a massive, uh, power swing, a lot of removal and a lot of deck pinning. Those, those, those are amazing. So. Yeah. If we go for it. So we got that second Adrenaline in the rush we didn't need, and we got uh, Vranwire. And, well, we have second Drawn Shield by that, so uh, all three of those are great. Uh, Nika Warriors, I'm not sure if they will be as useful as they used to be, but uh, having at least two in many decks is. I've seen some people play them in, in PTR, a public test rail. Uh, when testing this, uh, this patch enclosed environment, and, uh, I never seen, oh wow, that's, that's a great use. But, uh, yeah, they're still useful for foglets, uh, and some other things. But, uh, this guy, uh, those guys are great for, uh, Nilfgaard that focuses as on spice a lot, a more controlled Nilfgaard that is, uh, yeah, all of those are great. So, which, whichever faction you, you fancy, pick that. And in this case, I'm going to take Imperial Brigade because, uh, well, I'm going for a, I'm uh, going as wide as I can. So, well, I will, like, 99% chance that I'm going to have all of the rares by the time I finish opening those skates, by the way. So it's like not all that relevant for me at the moment. Uh, Epidemic, we already have one. You, you rarely run two, so you you are definitely going to go for a shield, shield maiden or perhaps a third mark and guard. No, running free is not always the best option, to be honest. But uh, yeah, it's it's a it's an option uh, when you are playing, uh, you know, uh, dwarves. So still, we are going for shield maiden. And uh, so the Merlin Infantryman, uh, we already had one, um, if you remember that, uh, deploy summon all copies of this unit, and, but it still shows uh, that we don't own one. That's because, uh, which is not explained in the game, which is annoying, uh, means uh, those guys have three different uh, pictures that make up one bigger picture, and we got one of the others. They have exactly the same name, exactly the same uh, abilities, everything is the same, it's just a different picture. We already have at least one of those, uh, one I believe, uh, with different picture, so, well, we want only one of this type, of, one with this picture, I, I believe, or, well, basically you don't want to, to get nine and then, hmm, uh, instead of uh, picking some other things, so that, that, that that's, that's my point, so you kind of need to remember which ones you have. Same goes for, for, for premiums, of course, sadly. Uh, well, I guess this I'll take this guy then. There we go. Hmm, I really have one. I definitely want a King's Guard, although I'm probably going to, to turn them into premiums. Uh, this is a staple of, of well, of Skellige decks, King, King's God deck. It's not going to be very good at the start of the season where all the everyone and their mother plays control, but later it's it's well last season it was extremely strong at the end of the uh, of the season. And by season I in this case I mean end of the patch. Mm, so, Priestesses of Freya, if you are playing, uh, if you have limited amount of, uh, of uh, kegs, or especially if you are playing free-to-play and you're, you like to play skill, get, get free of those, you, you need it, you want it, that's, uh, that's the, 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 probably the most important card in Skellige. Ancient Foglet, uh, a fairly decent uh, monster. Uh, for uh, well, fog-based decks and Marjoram is you cannot right click and uh, for it to tell it what it does, but uh, 
Oh, actually, it tells you. Uh, well, never mind. <laughs> um, it's 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 being split into two cards basically, and but yeah, they they actually uh, not these days uh, tell you what it does. So you can reset a unit, so uh, reset it to your base strength. So if that unit was boosted by twenty, or it if it had lost all the strength but one due to damage. This will reset it to, to zero and then you can choose if you want to strengthen it by three, which is increase its, uh, its base strength or weaken it by three, which will decrease it. In this case, I'll, I think I'll get, well, you should probably get marginal of, of, of that. Uh, foglets are okay ish, but nothing to write home about. I'll get the foglets since I don't have one. I really hope that's Ta da and uh, exploding kegs aren't too loud. I've done testing, but okay. Oh, and uh, the same uh, picture thing is true for uh, shield maidens. So, yeah. Uh, summon a copy of this unit to your row. So, mm, there has been similar card for uh, Northern Realms in, mm, in previous patch, and uh, it was fairly commonly used it's it's a good card because well you put it on your uh, every turn basically this uh, timer goes down by one when it reaches zero it resets oh well, actually it doesn't reset when it reaches zero uh, this uh, summons a copy of this card which again has a timer which means that you play one and if uh, it's not getting killed and your uh, it well or locked or whatever, and uh, turn land and round lasts enough turns, then uh, another one and another one is going to be summoned up to three, considering that you probably put three of those in your deck. Uh, well, in this case, I don't have any of those, so I will pick one. Probably not going to use them, never a big fun, but well, once again, if I were you, I would get Shield Maiden. Oh, look at that. So we got Ragnarok uh, out of uh, those random cards. Very nice. Uh, another King's God. Uh, actually, this is the same portrait. Oh, so King's God, the same thing with a portrait. And yet another uh, rare this time, uh, Aretuza Adept. Ragnarok. Uh, I don't like this card. I, it's my least favorite, but it's, it, it's a very powerful card and, uh, uh, basically, you put Ragnarok on all. It's a weather, uh, like frost or fog or whatever. This uh, time you play Ragnarok and it puts it on all the rows of op on opponent's side. And at the start of the turn, the highest unit on each of the rows will get hit by three. So if he has non gold units that can be hit on all three rows, that hits him for nine each round. If he has on two or six. On one, only for one, uh, only for three. Still, very annoying card. And an epic. Uh, Aromancy. Uh, so play a weather card from your deck or graveyard. So you can uh, remember that white frost uh, weather, you can reuse it. So you can play white frost, that is a card that puts frost on two rows, and uh, it lands in your graveyard. And uh, well, you once you, when you play Aromance, you can pick that card that was already played, which well gives you a lot of weather spam uh, against your opponents. So very very useful card if you want to play weather deck uh, such as uh, Wild Hunt, which is a starter deck uh, a type for monsters. Blue Boy Lucas, it's one of my favorite cards, if not the favorite one. Uh, he, uh, once again, the veteran thing, but he spawns the Spectral Whale on the opponent's side. So Whale is a three point creature, uh, that is, uh, jumps between, uh, is put on a random row, and at the end of the turn, it will, uh, at the beginning, I believe, of that player's turn, he will deal damage to everything on that row and jump to the random other row, which are two options, right? So it will keep jumping every round, dealing damage. Uh, just, just one, but this is very useful in conjunction with some, some other cards uh, that we'll see later. And Neneke, uh, 
I'm not sure about Nanaka. She, she was a staple card in the in the previous um, uh, in the previous patch because she resurrected. And this time around, she's quite powerful with eight, but she only just shuffles up to three cards from graveyard to your deck, which may be very useful. I have a few ideas in uh, which it it can be useful in bottling decks and uh, something like that, but uh, it's. It's not an obvious choice, and if you are like new to the game, I would probably go with Aromancy. Uh, since I want a, uh, I want a premium Blue Boy Lugas, I will pick him um, the other time, or well, I will pick him later. Basically, I'll go with Neneke, I think. Yeah. Oh, actually, let's go with Aromancy. It's probably going to be more useful at the start. I would go Blue Boy Lugas, but I kind of hope I will get a premium version out of another. Keg. Uh, once again, uh, we get a few rares. It's it's quite common to, uh, get, getting a decent ish card here. And the Merton Shackles, a uh, Queen's Guard. We have more than two Queen's Guard because we have a few more with different uh, uh, picture. We are going to get Vicavar Novice, which allows us to trigger an ability of Spying Enemy Ambassador of Emissar. Which actually means our emissary or ambassador, because they are spies that we put on an emissary side. So, not sure really how good this card is going to be, because this is a very good one. A very new one. It's It hasn't been in the game before. One of the newest cards uh, uh, that was released today, so, well, time will tell. There we go. Uh, we already have two spotters, if you remember, we have one premium one, which is still annoying that they haven't implemented like more information on that. We are going to take the protector, in this case, so we don't have any. But well, you, you get the gist about information on like other cards, it depends on what you want to build. Wow. Text. So we got a second Alba Pikeman, remember the, the one that summons itself, we already had one. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, we do have at least two of those Shield Maidens already, so... Uh, in this case, I think I will actually... Uh, I will take Vikovara. Uh, okay, so Vikovara resurrects a bronze unit from our opponent's graveyard. It's an extremely annoying and potentially very powerful Nilfgaard card. Uh, that can also be used with enemy spy with your own spy, so... Uh, you play spies in, on round one, then they go all to graveyard at the uh, at the end of the round, and uh, next turn, if there is nothing more interesting to uh, to steal, you are going to play your own uh, your own uh, spies once again. Uh, the Kavara medics are also extremely dangerous against Skellige because Skellige is. Mm, very reliant on uh, resurrecting their own units. It's, it's their basic basic strength. So stealing the things they would like to resurrect is extremely powerful against them. Very annoying stuff. Uh, well, Wildcard Navigator, you, uh, you basically select a, a wild hunt unit and that it, there are like four, four types that isn't a wild hunt navigator and you are going to summon a copy of it from your deck and so you have like one uh, wild hunt warrior and two more are in your decks you play this, uh, this uh, you play her and she is going to uh, take that unit from your deck and put it in play i'll get vikavara that doesn't really matter as i mentioned earlier let's be able Blue Straps Commander again. Uh, another Foglet, another Artiza. I'll get Foglet. Not going to, to like discuss things that we already seen. Uh, all it does is just a bad card. We have already seen Drummond Shield Maiden, but if you if you still need three, uh, I believe I have like two or three already, so I will pass on that. I will definitely get Neca. Uh, well, this is actually a premium. Okay, fuck it. Okay, I'll get over those in case they do something useful with it. Uh, but it's 
Well, that's only reason. I would take Neca or all that. Okay, so we got another gold and we got premium manganelle, uh, manganelle. So this is actually something I want to talk about. Whenever a card is revealed, be it on, from your hand or an enemy's hand, uh, this deals damage, two damage to random enemy. So this is another backbone or of new, mm, reveal Nilfgaard. And we got Shani, uh, legendary card, gold, uh, that, uh, well, deploy, resurrect a unit from your graveyard and add uh, for armor to it, so that means that well, we need to we can resurrect uh, uh, bronze as always or silver. Cannot resurrect gold because well, it doesn't mention that. And here we have uh, well, Ekimaras are a very well, they used to be very powerful, like a staple. Now I think that they still will be. They are resilient, which means they if you play them. On one round, they will stay on the board to another. And when they deploy, then they can consume an ally, which means they will destroy that ally and uh, be and they will be boosted by its strength. So if we have like a 20 strength unit on the board, which is not unusual, I'd say 10, 10 strength, which is well usual for for monsters. Uh, you play Akimara, you consume that uh, that unit. Uh, now you have 13 strength Akimara. That will stay on board uh, till the next round. So, well, very important unit uh, for consume monsters. Uh, Combat engineer toggle units resilience. So uh, this is something. Uh, remember adrenaline rush. So this is basically better adrenaline rush for uh, for Nilfgaard because it has a body. It has two points. So whenever it's deployed, you 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 um, can uh, toggle a resilience in one of the units. You can, you can also toggle, untoggle Resilia. So if someone has an Akimara, toggle means, well, switch, you know, uh, from uh, zero to one and whatever. And yeah, so you can untoggle it or you can get one of your uh, powerful units to stay for the next round. We already have two and they are in the starter deck, I believe. And it's reinforced Siege Tower. Whenever you deploy it, it adds a two armor to adjacent units. And now fresh crew. So this is a bit convoluted, but uh, so this is a, key, a keyword fresh crew, and there is another keyword crewman. And if the card with a crewman keyword is on board, is on if you deploy this guy adjacent to uh, a card with a crewman keyword, which is usually uh, for example key, crewman one or crewman two. At the moment, it's only one, but well. See what future brings. It's crew, crewman one. And then this is getting activated. If you have two, uh, for example, two units with a crewman tag, and you place this guy uh, directly between them, so it's adjacent to both. This is going to boost uh, to fire twice. So in this case, you deploy this guy. He gets uh, between two such things. He gets boosted to eleven, and uh, those two units get uh, two armor. Well, Ekimara is my way to go. I'm not sure how good reinforced siege towers. This this is a completely new unit. I mean, uh, well, unit is old by the effort is very new, so it's it's untested. Uh, not, I would say it's one of the weakest out of five different machines Northern Realms have, but it it, it may have its uses. Ekimara, uh, well, you can't go wrong with Ekimara. Holy shit, 44 minutes. Um, well, done banner heavy cavalry. So, not going to discuss it. It's, you start with two in your starter deck uh, on uh, us, Northern Realms. When you deploy it, you remove armor from two units and boost self, but the amount of that armor. So, for example, if we had that siege tower that boosted two guys by two. Uh, you can remove that uh, that four armor, two from each one, and boost him by uh, by six. Or you can steal armor from the enemy or whatever. But well, armor is fairly rare because it's mostly almost exclusively on Northern Realm units. So 
Well, okay, we got four of one. And we have another set of epics. So, Katakan, as you see, is uh, fairly similar to what uh, you know, Ekimara was, but he's a silver, so you can have only one, and uh, he consumes a unit from either graveyard, so he doesn't consume something that is in play, but uh, something that is uh, already in the graveyard. Very powerful card for consuming monsters. There are, he can't consume uh, golds, obviously, but yeah. Uh, so the uh, the witchers, there are three witchers, as you can see, Vesemir, Eskel and Lambert, and uh, Whenever they one of them is played, he summons two others from the deck. So this is a part of a of a uh, free set, and this is a locking unit uh, similar to the, uh, the cleaver everyone starts with in, in the starter decks. And you move a unit to this row on its side and toggle its lock. So you can, uh, it's it's a powerful eight. It's a, it's a lot for for card with with such an ability. So it's it's a decent one, but uh, not not a big fan of Scoia'tael are my least favorite faction. So we are going with Katakan. I, I, I rarely use use witchers to be honest, but they are a good tempo tempo play. If you are playing a lot of fairly weak cards and you tend to uh, to get behind, uh, to to get behind the enemy who just uh, plays a lot of powerful in strength cards and just out tempos you. And for example, after five uh, cards played, you find yourself like fifteen uh, power behind. Then well, putting then uh, trying to fit witchers in your deck uh, is not a bad idea. Uh, problem is that they will take three out of six of your silver slots. So. Use wisely. Not an not an auto include by no by no means, but there are decks that benefit from the great. Uh, standard bearer, uh, boost an ally or an ally, uh, an ally or revealed unit in your hand by free and clear weather from the row. So, yeah, this is an alternative option for clearing weather. Uh, same as Arch Griffin, you can clear weather with your clear skies, on, or you can use uh, such units. But they they only clear one row, uh, unlike the skies that clear all of them. Uh, yeah, we already have two spotters because one is, uh, if you remember, uh, uh, his premium. And by the way, you can upgrade. Uh, if I probably mentioned this in my basic tutorial. Uh, you can upgrade those cards using that Meteorite Powder into Premiums, if you want. Okay, that's a third Foglet. Um, what do you want? <laughs> well, I guess Kranborg Var Hunter. So he's... It's a bit complicated, basically. Strength and send by one whenever an adjacent unit is damaged. And when you deploy him, he just hits something for free. Like, right? you know, it's an archer. But this bit, it's, it's, it's interesting because, uh, uh, there are some ways of perpetually slowly damaging some of your units to gain some things. And well, he, he can be used in uh, interesting combos, but it's, it's not like a, it's a fairly advanced, it's fairly advanced stuff. Um, nothing interesting here. Uh, uh, uh. Organic card, but so well, all those cards are decent. This is like, as I said, a bit more niche. Well, this is a staple, so I'll, I'll just get with that because I. Oh, damn it. I clicked wrong. Open cake, please. Oh, we are what halfway through? Jesus, 50 minutes. All right, I will power through it. I don't think I'm going to do like opening from the rest of the cakes uh, of the rest of the cakes, and that's the third infantry, uh, Tabernacle infantryman. We have all the all the versions, so, so that's about it. Uh, 
All right, so we got Neneke, uh, Fiend, and the Cleaver that we already... This is another thing I'm not a big fan of, that you get in Kegs cards that uh, are a part of your starting decks. It's kind of, kind of a waste. Uh, toggle, so Fiend, it's a 5 strength, Toggle in a slog. If it's an enemy, damage it by half of its power, rounding down and ignoring Alma, so... Uh, a useful card for uh, for control, so I'm going to take it. It's, it's a new card, untested, and so I want to test it. I'll get Neneke some other time. Mm, well, we don't have those. Uh, promote this unit whenever you play a weather card. It seems like a terrible, terrible card with four strength. I think they it has been introduced in like last. Uh, patch like yesterday midnight or something it's uh, it's weird but so, so I wouldn't pick it if I were you I was yet water navigator but well yeah, soon they will change it later I don't know it's, it's weird a promote means turn turn it to gold it's a benefit but definitely not a benefit worth playing a four a four power card Uh, so this is, we've seen Overdose and this is Immune Boost. Uh, boost 3 adjacent units by 3 and add 3 armor. So this is actually useful because armor, if you play armor, you kind of want those. Uh, well, at least one or two. Emissary is a uh, staple for Nilfgaard. You put a spy with two power in an enemy's row and you get to draw two bronze cards. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, two bronze units from your deck and choose one that are the emissary that has been included yesterday. Uh, two bronze units and uh, choose one of them to play. Uh, well, in this case, I think I will get myself a single overdose to check it. Uh, the, the, the whole armor archetype, armor thing is completely new as well. So. Okay, so we now have. Uh, Three river scouts and three alba spearmen. As you can see, uh, the th that's one of the reasons that you not uh, entirely want to focus on like finishing the trees, uh, like get a full uh, set of three because well, you will get them um, here and there. For that reason, I will get Mardrum. We've discussed the rest of those. Come on, shoot. Oh, look at that. We got Avalak and Iris. Look at that. Great stuff. So Avalak is also something new. Deploy Clash, which means you deploy it and if both if the other player has not passed, both players get, draw two cards. Mm, it's an interesting effect. Uh, so you it's a 10 is a, is a fairly powerful body, so you're not paying much for it for this effect and, well, there will be decks in which this guy will be extremely useful. And Iris is a very interesting card as well, so... Uh, Deathwish, uh, she, she's a spy as you can see, disloyal, oh, not really a... Well, uh, you put her on the other side of the board and whenever he, she dies, that's a Deathwish, whenever she's removed from your... Uh, from, from the board, she boosts all units on the other side of the boards by three. So you play her on the other side of the board and then uh, shoot her. And well, there, there it goes. Everything gets boosted. It's, she actually can be, a, I believe, very, very useful if you happen to, to stumble upon her. Very useful in some uh, very low level play, uh, like with beginners and such. So, uh, it, it can cut, uh, it can catch a lot of people. Uh, a surprise, okay. Uh, this guy seems like a, well, he's a staple for his special spam, so, well, let's see how that goes. Let's get a trio. I have brigade, so that, that one that promotes for whatever reason. Okay, so, uh, we already have Neutral, that is in a monster starter deck. We get Laberkin and we get Aelrin. Aelrin uh, well, jumps out of your deck whenever you have five or more elf allies, which 
it's a useful thing. In, in, in certain decks, it gives you a lot of tempo. Uh, because to whatever to whatever you have played, it's uh, another six strength on the board, and uh, it also thins your deck, but it's it's a silver, of course. Laberkin is something I want to test, because uh, there is uh, deploy boost all botchlings in your hand, deck and graveyard by five. And when he dies, summon the botchling. Botchling is... Uh, mm, is exactly the same, but uh, it's named Botchling and uh, it affects lab Laberkins. So uh, you summon a Laberkin, it boosts uh, Botchlings, uh, your Botchling, because you can only have one at the moment, there's no way of copying them. So it boosts the, the other Botchling to 10, and uh, when it dies, uh, be it during that turn or at the end of the turn, it will summon another Botchling. It, it will summon that 10 strength Botchling from your deck. And if that's if so if he survived the whole turn, that watch link will be uh, will show up on the board in uh, on the next turn, which is a powerful thing. And uh, that watch link coming in will boost this guy uh, in the graveyard because he will be in the graveyard at the time. So will you will have ten strength watch link in the graveyard, and that's where Neneke can come in. Remember Neneke, the, the the one that I haven't chosen twice. She can uh, uh, put that botchling in back into the or Lamborghini in this case uh, from the graveyard into the deck. So when uh, the botchling dies, it's it gets summoned again. Uh, summon unlike resurrect. So summon is get from your deck. Resurrect get from your graveyard. And this only summons, so you need to put him back into your deck. I, I want to test this because that's that's a new thing within the deck. I hope it wasn't too confusing. Mm, well, Ara has Behemoth. Uh, well, this is a staple in Monster Consume deck. Uh, whenever an ally, any ally, consumes a card, like uh, for example those Ekimaras and so on and so forth, spawn an Arakas. Effort damage self by one, ignoring Karmo. So he can spawn uh, four of those Arakases, Arakai. Uh, four of those Arakai, and at the moment he spawns fifth, uh, he dies. Uh, unless you you manage to boost him somehow, so uh, those archai are uh, strength free by the way. So. And there is a way of getting a lot of consumption in in those in some deck. Uh, uh, we already have three of those. So let's get another queen's guard. We don't have this, uh, you know, uh, this illustration. Goody. And well, in this case, well, we get the Priestess of Freya. But well, And nice, we got Cantarella, which is a spy, a very powerful spy, which means we are giving 10 strength to the enemy. Uh, but when the, when she deploys, she, uh, she allows us to draw a card. Uh, we can, uh, once we see the card, we can uh, choose that we don't want it. Uh, we then place it on the bottom of our deck and draw another. Uh, seems like a fairly weird thing. We already had this card in our hand and we, we play it and all we get in return is our enemy is 10 points stronger but we get a uh, we get a card but that gives us card advantage which means we used our turn but the amount of cards in our hands hasn't changed which means that we will have one more turn in the end compared to our enemy so that's what those kinds of cards are for. All right, and uh, so we start with Ermion uh, in our Skellige deck, so uh, disregard him. And we uh, we have Siri Dash, which is a neutral card. Whenever this unit enters graveyard, strengthen it by three and shuffle it back into your deck. It was Siri uh, Dash decks were very common at some point, then kind of went out of favor later on. Basically, what you well, what you do is uh, 
gets Siri into play like on your first round. Uh, she well, she she does her thing. She's a nine string of gold. Then she goes back into into your deck, and uh, you want to uh, get her uh, get her again on your second round and play her, and then get her again on your third round. Uh, to the way to do that is to uh, thin your deck a lot. Uh, get a lot of cards that discard card from uh, that discard cards from the deck. Cards such as Ermion, because you you draw two cards and then discard two others. So. Uh, that literally uh, removes two cards from your deck and makes it more likely for you to pick up Siri Dash. I played the Siri Dash deck, I wasn't uh, very fond of it because it wasn't particularly... Uh, there were quite a few... If you get a Siri, a Siri Dash, to, if you uh, draw her properly, it's, it's fairly powerful, but... Uh, uh, it wasn't possible to to to, to get it uh, efficiently like in every deck, every game, or even in every other game. So it's it's too random for me. Uh, Venom Roach is is uh, well deploy damage an enemy by three, which is six by three, so that's nine. Uh, if it was destroyed, spawn a blue stripes commando on the random row and it repeats the deployability one time only. Uh, so. Uh, you basically, if you manage to kill something with it, uh, that's uh, three damage, and another three damage that's twelve, uh, six in the gold body, uh, six in removal, and uh, then you get to spawn two blue stripes commandos, which are four strength units, which is is basically a backbone or a cherry on top rather of a, a new blue stripes commando deck. So we definitely want to uh, check him out. Go. Mm. Well, Brad Coloring Roar, we don't have that one. Uh, destroy an ally, spawn a bear. Bear is uh, strength 12, a bronze unit. So, for example, if we have a unit that has been damaged 1, or someone played this guy on us, right? Uh, because if he is uh, he's a spy, if he is spying, he's still considered our ally, so we can destroy it, uh, him by using Blood Curling, Curling Raw. So this is a new card and we are going to try it. But getting another mercenary is, was also a, a solid option. Probably a better one, actually, because we, you need three of those and you don't really need three Blood Curling Raws. Hmm... We don't have a Necro Warrior yet, okay, just check me if there are any premiums. There we go. Mm, no premiums, we already have all like three, two of those, so I will get Emissary, because one was premium. Mm, well, we'll get one um, one more of those because uh, the Mirrodin Shackles are, are okay, but you don't really need more than one. Almost never, and we'll get them at some point. I'm sure. Mm, well, I guess we can get this uh, this portrait. There we go. And... Okay, this one. I don't think you need to boost self by 5 if Frost is anywhere on the board and if all the Frosts are removed, damage him by 5. But, well, it doesn't mean that... Uh, well, if there wasn't a Frost, he's not being damaged. If there was a Frost, then he's getting damaged. It's an okay card in, in the first deck, but well, I'm not convinced if it's good enough to be played. Uh, Reinforced Ballista, we haven't seen any of those yet. Um, deploy damage an enemy by two, and if there is a crewman next, we, we can reply, uh, 
uh, we, we deploy it next to a crewman uh, card. Uh, we repeat that deployability, which uh, which means we shoot it once again. And if we deploy it between two such cards, it shoots three times by two. It's also a new card, so I'm going to uh, I want to check it out. But well, the others were decent too. Uh, well. You will definitely want another Mahakam Defender and uh, Blue Stripes Commandos. I think we already have two, but uh, with different uh, uh, pictures. I'll just get... Ah, uh, let's, let's get this guy. But if you wanted to play some... Um, some Dwarves, those Mahakam Defenders definitely a good choice. Just pick the third one, ASAP. Uh, okay, so Raging Berserker. If he gets damaged, retaliation means that that activates when you get damaged. So it, he transforms in he trans transforms into a Raging Bear. So if you damage him by five or by one or by four, you get the jest. But don't uh, unless you destroy him. If if he's killed by this this single uh, instance of damage, it doesn't trigger. So he turns into an eleven strength. Uh, bear, rather than six. So yeah, interesting stuff. And there are quite a little, few ways of self-damaging yourself. And that is actually one of the. This is something that uh, fits pretty well with the archetype of uh, that Skelga starts with in their starter deck, which is a self-harming ar archetype. One last array, it's, it's, it's good probably to have two, but one is... is you rarely put two. It, uh, so yeah, it's a good card, but I would go with Berserker. Okay, so we already have a Katakan. Uh, Malina. Um, Okay, so uh, it doesn't show here, but she's loyal disloyal, which means that you can play her on both sides. You can put her on uh, an enemy's row or on your own uh, side of the board. At the start of the turn, move a random unit to another row on this side uh, of this... Oh, from another uh, row to this side, uh, on this side to this row. So she basically pulls units to her row from other rows on that side. And Dienge Fett, she he strength herself by one. Um, oh, and uh, when you deploy him, he damages three allies by one, like this bes this berserker, remember, uh, from from a second uh, second before. And uh, for every uh, ally he damages this way, he increases his strength by one, which would be to eleven. We are going to pick him. Not a lot of premiums, actually. Uh, well, another Imperial Golem. Okay, we are, what, uh, eight to go. Right, Brigade. Um, I already have one, and we have one of those, definitely. Elven Mercenary. Well, we haven't seen that one, so um, it's an ambush card. You put him face down, uh, and enemy doesn't know what he is. And after two, he has a timer of two. So after two turns, at the start of the turn, he will spring, which means uh, turn him back around as a as an ambush. Uh, and then, at the moment, there aren't many ambush cards, but there are some. Um, there are some that he may be mistaken for, and uh, for example, uh, the. Uh, some removal, uh, some lock will be used to, to, to prevent him uh, from acting. His well, I'll, I'll get one, I guess, but 
you're probably better off picking Navigator. And the thing is that he was around like similar to, to what he is earlier, but there were a few more very powerful, uh, very powerful cards that were ambush cards. Okay, so here Skellige Storm applies Skellige Storm to a row. At the start of the turn, the units uh, damage the units at the end of that row by three, two, and one. So uh, three last units. Uh, from from the la uh, from right to left will be damaged by three, second by one, third by one, uh, first by three, second by two, and third by one. But so this this is a very good weather, I would say. Uh, it's, it's only one one row, but it, it's an interesting thing. But Sigdrifa is a staple of uh, Skellige. It's a resurrection. It's a card that resurrects just as priestesses, but she can resurrect. Uh, uh, a unit uh, that is silver rather than um, bronze units that uh, priestesses are limited to, so very far, that's for sure. But both of those are more good. Uh, Sheldon's Axe as well. Okay, so that's our third Mark and Defender that we haven't chosen before. And can win Siege support, so this guy, oh. Finally, we got someone who has a crewman here. So he's actually very interesting. It's, it's a very new card and boost each ally by one when it appears on your side and add it to one armor uh, to it. So basically, uh, we have that guy and everything that we play gets boosted by one and uh, gets one armor. If it's machine, it gets boost by, uh, boosted by two and gets two armor instead. And he's a crewman, so. Uh, we get to get uh, we get to if he is on the board and we play uh, a machine with a fresh crew keyword uh, that ability will get activated by him. Very, we got very little northern realms actually compared to other stuff. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we got a second one. Back to back. Uh, well, I guess I will get the third spotter. Just remember, one more premium. It doesn't count here. And uh, well, I guess I will get the banner light cover. We don't have one yet. We discussed it earlier. Yeah, as I said, very little in terms... Well, we weren't picking them, so that's, that's one reason. And once again, the bloody overdose. And... Okay, so Vran Wario. Um, very much a staple card for monsters. So, you deploy him, he consumes the unit to your right. So it's... Uh, the king, uh, that unit gets destroyed, he gets uh, boosted by the current strength of that unit. Not a base, but current. And uh, then every two turns he does the same. He eats the unit to the right, and the timer, timer is restarted. And it uh, it triggers all the things that happen in monster decks whenever something gets consumed. Which is uh, remember Araka spawning, all the Neckers get uh, boosted by one wherever they are, and so on and so forth. So uh, very basic units, uh, units for monsters. And here, uh, okay, so another staple, uh, Clan Tusek Axeman, uh, armor of two, only strength of two, but when uh, he has a veteran, so every turn, he, every round, he will get uh, more powerful, round two, he will be uh, basic strength three, R rank four, he will be basic strength four, rank three, basic strength four, get my jest, and uh, he will boost its, uh, himself by one whenever an enemy is damaged. And he got nerfed pretty hard to only two and two armor, but he has a potential. So unless if you are not going to kill him outright, which sadly is is fairly easy because there's a lot of things that deal four damage, and well, also standard build uh, hits by uh, for seven, 
he will rise very quickly because you will have a lot of things that do damage to enemies. Remember that Stemmel Forward's Tremor ability. It will it uh, does two damage to up to eight random targets on the enemy side, and so on and so forth. There is uh, so there is that's a damaging Skellige uh, or uh, Axeman Skellige uh, deck archetype. It, it never was like the the top of the line, but it's. I think it's very fun, and I, I hope that in this patch it's it's still relevant. Right, so uh, uh, we are back with. Okay, so Asir as a uh, Varan hit. Mm. Shuffle up to two cards from your graveyard into your deck. Uh, she's a Nilf Guardian, so. She used to be able to shuffle enemies from an enemy like that, and she used to be able to shuffle golds, which, as you can imagine, is very powerful because if you manage to, there are ways to basically draw all your cards. Sometimes you can manage that from your deck, mill yourself, as they, uh, as people call it. Uh, then you would be able to, for example. Put uh, golds that you've already used back into your back into your deck and use them again. That has been very recently nerfed. It's still a very decent ten strength, and uh, uh, but there is uh, well, I can't think of a uh, good use for her at this very moment. Uh, Holger, as you can see, we already have one. From starter deck, uh, I still grab her because like Skellige is my lowest priority. Uh, Skeletal is my lowest priority, basically. So I'd, I'd rather have this guy. I'd rather have her. Oh, actually, we are uh, well one ahead. Let's see what what we've picked up. Uh, I won't be able to. Uh, okay, cards. Uh, nope. And the builder, please. I still haven't like created any of my own decks because I'm still make. I only made one of the uh, uh, videos about starter decks, and well, just want to focus on that first. Now, as you can see, we have uh, well, one. Uh, we have at least one uh, third of all the cards. But if we filter standard only. We can. We already have half of the cards, uh, more or less, uh, that are in the game when it's, when you only count standard ones, which well, we have a handful more that we have on premium versions of. Uh, so okay, let's let's take a look because this is this is basically the state of the board after opening 60, uh, 60 packs. The truck cards. Uh, we are not really missing anything from the. Uh, that you would well, you would like one more mar Mardrum at some point, uh, perhaps one more Tremos, but even in uh, uh, damaging Skelly, I don't use more than one. And as far as uh, epics go, uh, we got uh, a decent handful. We still we still are missing quite a lot, and we only got a single uh, single Ragnarok. Uh, single gold, uh, gold one here on top. Well, actually, we got this one as well, so we had an option to get a uh, Siri Dash as well. So, well, we have some, as you can see, uh, five out of 19, and uh, yeah, five out of 19. And monsters, uh, we don't have leaders because we haven't done the challenges yet, but that's where they come from. Uh, we don't have. Let's just pick bronze. Uh, right, we haven't picked any neckers, haven't we? Well, that's interesting. And we somehow managed to not get a, a single copy of a common ghoul, which is bizarre. But well, here we are. <laughs> uh, ghoul is another useful thing for consume consume monsters. But for the rest, we we have most of rare. Uh, most of the rares and commons that we need, as you can see. 
uh, just just the neckest that we miss, despite having well, we had plenty of options of picking them, and well, most of commons we have enough-ish. Well, skins. Okay, I guess we have only one Akimar and one Arakas Behemoth, so we are pretty bad on the consume front. But as far as the uh, wild hunt, we we are pretty much set. Silvers and golds, uh, not so much. As you can see, only one gold, which is Imelif, the one we started with. And as for silvers, we got Katakan, uh, one of the crones, but that uh, and uh, a fiend. We've got uh, bronzes. We focused heavily on Nilgat, so as you can see, we we have almost all of it. Uh, this is, I think, one of the few that we didn't have option to be pick more. Same with Manganel, which is a common, but we have at least one uh, premium one, so that's that's two. Perhaps we have more premium ones. So, uh, yeah, as far as the rares goes, most of most of the rares we have, and uh, yeah, we just need to focus on silver. So as you can see, even after opening sixty or so, um, you get. As you can see, it and um, pretty sizable. Like most of the rares, you you are you are covered. Uh, after playing for a week or uh, for a week more or or, or alike, you will um, be able to get and get the rest of commons and rares. And yeah, that, that that's where you just uh, then you will be able to meal the rest. What I'm going to do? I will open a. Uh, 60 more or something on, uh, and record it, but between uh, now and then I will get to level 3 and uh, see how much we'll be able to mill, how how many scraps we'll be able to get. I discourage you from uh, spending, uh, if you plan on staying in the game for a longer time, I would uh, suggest not spending the, the scraps on rares, because as you can see they are pretty easy to come by all the rares. It's, it's, you know, you, you may need to wait wait a week or two of, of you know playing, but you will end up having enough uh, uh, things uh, for different types of uh, uh, for different types of uh, or what's the name uh, for different types of decks. So basically, you play the decks you have cards for, and uh, then you will basically gain the rest organically um, by by opening cakes. And uh, I would focus on getting uh, your most important silvers, which will uh, set you uh, back to 100, or golds, which will set you back uh, 800. As you can see here, 800. As far as uh, when it comes to uh, what does. Premium only, so if you want to get a, a common into a premium, that's 100 of those. Uh, rare, that's 200. Uh, epic, that's 300. And legendary, that's 400. So, uh, well, those are not going up as as hard. And if you are like in a in an awful bind and you cannot possibly get enough. Uh, bloody, uh, you are very unlucky about some specific type of uh, common that's 30 scrap if you are desperate. So, well, that's it. Uh, between the, the episodes, as I said, uh, I will get to level 3 and unlock the milling option, and we will see how much uh, scrap I would get uh, by milling uh, all the extra cards. So, for example, all the cards that I have, like 6. But also, like in this case, so we have uh, those are the same cards. So we only need one with this, one with this, one with this. Or well, if you are so inclined, like the three of the one you like more. So in this case, we can uh, mill what four, six, seven, eight, nine, nine cards out of just just from those three, and just uh, leave one a piece. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that was interesting because oh man, my my throat almost over an hour, hour twenty four four minutes. Please, well, see you back next time. I will try to get the um, the tutorials for starter decks up tomorrow, unless um I my throat dies. So yeah, 
Sim. Cheers.